Hi, I'm Christian. And I'm Vera. And in this video, we're going to replace our ABS module. <laughs> Another okay. Bing and Bong. Another Bing and Bong. Now, the reason we got to replace the ABS module is because of a DSC fault. So dynamic stability control, which is the thing what prevents the discovery from flipping over when you go around turns. This is one of the biggest complaints people have about the Discovery 3 because any small minute problem will result in a vehicle lowering down into excess height. And that's really not so good when you're out there off-roading in the desert, you know, and in the vast country of Australia and in the canyons in the United States. Over here in Germany, it ain't really mattering because you can go 180 even in excess height. And the thing is only 100 euros. So let's get it out and get the new one in. And hope you like that video. This is the ABS control module and it's also responsible for the DSC. And what happens is um, once that ECU fails, then the vehicle will lower itself into the excess height mode. The OBD2 protocol reports an ECU module failure and the ECU is part of the ABS module. So it's really not much work to change this out. Um, also, we're not going to be able to do a bleeding procedure of the module itself. Okay. I'm going to have to cut that out. No, I, I'm not going to cut you out. That's what I would never ever do. This is what we want to do and if it's successful then great. If not, we'll put the old one back in and probably send this one back. Now we got some room. That's what you get when you have a blacksmith living in your household, <laughs> right? Banging all day. That's gonna go a whole morning now. So you think this is gonna work? I don't know. It's never what it's supposed to be. <laughs> did you check the sensor? What sensor? Why didn't I check the sensor? Okay, I show you a picture. This is the ABS module, okay? Yeah. And this illustration indicates what's all connected to it and related to it and it's just everything so it's like <laughs> you know that picture of the of the food chain that's that's the same thing here that's the equivalent by Land Rover so this is the thing we're changing and all the other stuff relates to it it could be everything yeah another yeah. Saturday project <laughs> but though we have to bleed the uh, brake lines afterwards uh, that's something I haven't thought about. It said in the manual only two bolts. Oh. That's not normal. Oh, see. Mm. So this is the unit. Maybe there's something obvious over there. Yeah, something obvious like it's not working. So let's see if the number is the same. Here's the number. The other side of the number. Okay, we use your number here. Well, it's not the same number. Well, you got to look at this number here. Okay. Oh. I would say it's a three. Beautiful. It got a quality label on it. Bang, 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 bang. <laughs> you gotta concentrate on our work. Can Full you open stuff. this up again? Yeah. I don't know why I close it. Yeah, because you're not paying attention. No. <laughs> Next thing. This is a power hammer, just if you're wondering, okay? Yeah, and we It has a bear weight of 15 kg. <laughs> Luckily, I didn't buy the big one like I originally wanted. <laughs> Please you know, normally I want to get me the biggest one I can get. I'm just stupid. Yeah. All the things I screw up, I usually cut out. Make myself look really smart on the video. That's how, how NASA got that new moon rover up there. That Mars video, rover. The new Mars rover. Up. I was watching that stream. Yeah, it's a live stream. <laughs> at one point, suddenly there was a black and white picture of the Mars. Same one I have in the bathroom. Yeah, we landed on Mars with that rover and it sure didn't burn up in the atmosphere. 
So this is now in there. Nobody needs to tighten bolts. Why not? Can we flush that thing now and see if there's any debris inside? Before that, I want to do an analysis of the circuit diagram together with our viewers and, and, and sound really smart again. And if I screw up this thread, it would absolutely make my day. And I'm going to have to live with him. It's going in now. Typically, you use a T4 tool to make a bleed cycle on this. So it would cycle the mechanics on the inside to get all the air out. And of course, we don't have that. Well, why didn't you get it? Because I wasn't sure if the Gap 2D tool can do it or not. Why is this fluid all red? But I wanted to talk about the bleeding. We can't cycle that bleeding procedure automatically. I looked at the circuit diagram. Yeah. I tried to figure out how much of that circuit can I potentially not bleed. Um, and that's really not a lot. I would say it's less than a few milliliters. Um, so it's going to accumulate some air. But once we cycle the ABS brake module, we find some dirt in Germany, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we hit the brakes on dirt. Snow is gone, obviously. It's nice it's weather today. It's 15 degrees. Did, no, don't interrupt okay. now. We're going to do that a couple of times and then we just bleed the brakes again. This is my strategy. So cycling this thing by hitting the brakes should get the air through the lines, through the module, below the module, and then we bleed it again. Well, we got to stop talking now because the, the power hammer is running. Am I, Am I done with grease now? Yeah. This was really easy. But we're not done yet. Yeah, we got to do the entire brake yeah. bleeding. But he's not using the power. Okay, so this is done. Yeah, but that's still open. Cool. What's still open? Like that and that? Those no, I tightened them. No, they are sticking out. I'm sure some parents bought their kids a set of drums. Yeah, and... <laughs> at one point, and then they were really happy when they started drumming. <laughs> and other parents... You know, got them to play the guitar, first an acoustical one. As a trumpet. And as soon as they got to be 14 or 15, that acoustical one went away. And the basement was suddenly a studio with all the friends and the electric guitars over. Yeah. So I guess here, okay, we were all happy when he started to bang around on a piece of glowing iron when he was eight or yeah. nine, yeah, eight or nine years old. And now we got a blacksmith at home. I mean, the good thing is, if you need, for example, your chisel from your Hilti sharpened, you can get that done at home. Looks clean. Yeah, looks like it's welded up. Or if you need a new handmade hammer, put this plug back in. Yeah, if you need, you know, for Valentine, a rose made up out of steel, you can place an order for that as well. Yeah. <laughs> Come on into the car. Again, I, I never done any of this before. No. Um, we got now a red fault on the ABS module. That wasn't there before. Oh boy. So, but let's first see if I can reset this fault. Very well, the fault cleared over the OBD2. What we're going to do next now is bleed the brakes in the normal way. Better have a small plan than no plan. Going to install our brake bleeder. That is very easy. So we got that brand new. Yes. And it annoys me a lot. But cheapest cheapest Chinese. One. You didn't. I did not buy the cheapest one. I bought the second cheapest one. Okay. <laughs> this bottle doesn't have like a little hole in it. I didn't know that when I first used it, so it built up pressure. <gasps> and, it and then at one point the sink popped off and got the brake fluid all over the smart car. Oh God! Thank God it wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't there. The first wheel we're gonna bleed is the one in the furthest back. That's yeah. Great. I want to say all of our viewers know how to do that. Oh, I thought I'm going to have to push oh. the, the brake pedal. No, no, those times are over. Really? Yeah. We'll wait now here till yeah. there are no bubbles. 
Do you see any bubbles? I don't see anything. It's leaking here. What a stupid design. Why are the Chinese, you know, they can do stuff so good. And then some, some other things, they, they do so extremely stupid. I'm just, now I got to drill a hole in here. Yeah. See, that was the air. Yeah, now yeah, I see the, the air. air. Don't Luckily, the power hammer is going again. <laughs> So you see everything now? Yeah. Can we go to the other side now? Yeah. Okay. I see nothing. There I see bubbles. I don't. You have your hands. And this time I'm gonna do it right. I have to exhaust the air here first. I didn't do that last time. <laughs> I don't know why. You gotta push it onto the snob. Do you yeah. see the snob? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. This and push it onto the snob. Right. There. And now I gotta push the safety clip in. There, it's back on. I wanna explain my theory. Show me my manual. Now we changed this module out here. This is the master brake cylinder. These are the individual wheel brake calipers. And we did a bleeding now. So we bled through. All lines going from here through the open valves. These are normally open valves down to here. This line is now air free and this line is air free. And we also got... Now all other lines are not bled and they have now air in them. And the question is now how do we get this air out? My theory is now once we get the motor to spin and the pump to actuate, it will take the remaining air out of these lines and circle that into the lower section of the brake lines and all we have to do is repeat the bleeding cycle like we just did. Here, see it says here, T4 must be used to operate the solenoid valves and the return pump to ensure correct bleeding of the HECU and brake circuits. We can't do that. So we're gonna hit the ABS brakes um, as hard as we can on a gravel road to make sure we cycle this. This is my theory to get the air out. I'm sure we're gonna get a lot of comments on that one. That's your pen here? That's my pen. You, no, you're not allowed to take. No, give it back to me. Somebody here, so we're gonna try here. Oh, somebody. <laughs> and, and we got a fault. HDC fault. Uh, oh, I don't like it. Well, it's certainly circling the ABS motor. That's the idea behind it. Oh, main what? control module fault. So that fault didn't go away. Shit. So there's the sensor. And if you look now here real close, look at this debris on there. What? Look. Seven to nine Newton meters. It's so. my least favorite part of any car shop. <laughs> yeah, check out how high the vehicle is if it's in <laughs> super extended mode. I got it empty now. I put like a little tiny hose into this hole and that's what got all the way down to the bottom. Yeah. I used your jam glasses, I'm sorry about that. So here's the problem. This is the fluid I extracted out of the top of the container. This is the fluid down from the bottom of the container. I flushed a large amount through it. It did not mix with the old fluid and the old fluid remained down in the bottom. And in addition, I used the bleeding system from my friend and not my own. And there was old fluid in that bleed system and I poured in my new fluid and mixed it up with it. Later on, I asked him how old that fluid was. And he said, well, about two years. So the bottom line is, even though I replaced all the fluid, I didn't do it properly and I flushed old fluid down into the ABS module. I think that's what killed it. That's what killed the ABS module. So what we're gonna do now is we got now all the fluid out. We're gonna pour in new fluid and flush it again. Maybe the system cures itself. Okay. 
That, that would be the nicest thing. <laughs> okay. I really doubt that. <laughs> it broke on its own? So maybe... No, it didn't break on its own. You broke it. I didn't know that this container is separated into different compartments. Yeah, I really. learned that from Waldo's world. Okay, he said this in his last video that this container has different compartments, and that's when I saw, geez, if that's the case, you can't just pour a new fluid on top, it will never mix. Thanks to Waldo, I had the idea of extracting that fluid completely out, and it's a mess. It's, it's probably part of it is 16 years old. Yeah, and I probably. flushed that 16 year old fluid when bleeding into our ABS module and since then we got problems. It, that's why the problems didn't appear right away. That's why it took some cold days and some weeks and months until this motor cycled a couple of times in the snow days and that's what made it fail. It would not have failed if I would have replaced that fluid properly. Okay, that's the thing. But how is that fluid going to get in that last chamber where we had a hard time getting well, it out? It, it, the, the divider mm -hmm. only goes to up here. So once I fill it last far enough, it yeah. goes over the divider. So this is now new fluid in here. Okay. Now we can hook up the bleed system. Are you frustrated? I am very frustrated. So... This is really the end of this video, I think. We're gonna have to call it an unsuccessful discovery repair. Yeah. Because fact is, we invested now two days into fixing our um, ABS module problem. What I wanted to do is give you a little bit of an overview on what I've all done, like the brake switch. I did take all four wheels off and cleaned the wheel sensors. After that, I checked the wheel speed sensors over my OBD2 diagnostic unit and they diagnosed perfectly fine, all four wheels identical. I also checked the jaw rate sensor. There is actually also a way to diagnose it with my OBD2. It works perfect. I checked the supply voltage to the ECU and the battery voltage. It's perfect. It's exactly what it's supposed to be when the car is not running and when the alternator is running. I checked that everything gets to this unit here. So this is all fine. Here, I show you a frustrated Vera. Yeah? It was frustrating, right? It was frustrating, yeah. Stop making noise. Well, I want to eat, you can do it. <laughs> so here we are, a couple of weeks later, and the discovery fixed itself. The problem with the DSC is gone. It's almost been like four weeks since we attempted this repair, and it's working fine now. No more DSC faults. We'll show you how you can easily see if your ABS module or your DSC is working. We turn on the hill descent control. Hill descent control. There. Yeah. And now it's regulating the speed. And by using the plus minus buttons here, I can control the speed down. Oh, this button here. Yeah, I turn this all the way down. It's steep hill here, 18%. And you hear it regulating. It's holding the speed. Hear it? Yes, of yeah. course. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's working. I'm waiting for... It fixed itself because it kind of flushed that new fluid through, I think. Yes. And that took care of the problem. And the lesson is, what's the lesson out of this? Let me buy the good stuff. Let your wife buy the brake fluid <laughs> and don't buy the cheap brake fluid and don't use used brake fluid. Yeah. 
<laughs> All right, so we are really thankful for that. Now we're gonna have to enjoy our McDonald's food. Yes, I'm hungry. Um, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching this all the way to the end. And we'll see you guys next week. See you next week. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>